Michael. So uh, I was I was curious to I love your analogy of the, the the hole in the dam getting wider and the other little holes. So what happens if you know 50 50 chance? I mean, obviously there's a lot of stuff propping up the stock market and everything else right now. But let's say we have a black swan moment with like say Deutsche Bank going under and dragging down 20 times the hypothecation of the European economy. Does that dam just break? And what does that mean for the, the average person in North America and Europe? Oh, that, that's, a, that's a really good question. First of all, I don't think that's a black swan moment. That's a white swan moment. <laughs> We've seen it before. We know what it looks like. We know it's coming. I mean, there's nothing surprising about Deutsche Bank going belly up at this point. It, once every newspaper you've ever read has predicted it, um, it's no longer a black swan. So it's probably going to come from somewhere else that we don't expect, like you know the third largest Italian bank you've never heard of. Um, I hope that doesn't happen, and I hope it doesn't happen anytime soon. Uh, and I'm actually perplexed by people in this community who wish for uh, and see Bitcoin as thriving in a moment of chaos and collapse in traditional currencies. Um, I've lived in a country that has had a currency crisis twice. I've visited many current countries that have currency crises. It is ugly. A lot of really good people get very hurt. Uh, generations lose their future overnight and do not recover in 30 years. And so we should not be wishing for that. Um, if we do have a, a global economic crisis at this point, Bitcoin is not ready to absorb anything. Let's be realistic. Um, there is no exit valve. Um, e even if everybody in Bitcoin actually gains an advantage from having some diversification, that's not going to make much of a difference to anybody else. Um, all of the investment in Bitcoin, not just in companies, but also in individuals and entrepreneurs and startups, dries up instantly overnight, and we're all set back across the board by a decade. Um, so I don't wish that on anyone. Um, I hope that doesn't happen. Unfortunately, the system is very fragile, so there's a good chance it might happen. So we'll see. We'll see how it plays up. I, I certainly don't want people to think that just because Bitcoin can act, act as a safe haven investment, just because it can act as an exit valve, just because we see that when things like Brexit or the yuan devaluation happen, Bitcoin spikes up. There's a big leap between that and saying, I hope the world burns so I can make money on my Bitcoin. <laughs> so, part two of that is the more likely scenario, which is when it burns, the fire is put out by several trillion dollars with the helicopter money. That's not even done with bonds. I mean, they're talking about maybe IMF doing like you know hundred trillion dollar bailouts and things like that. Now, would that have a, a different effect in terms of the size of the holes in the wall? Um, not really. Well, to me, I, I think you know, and again, I'm not an economist, which probably means I can speculate with complete immunity from criticism. Um, <laughs> but if you consider that the world economy is is on the floor and flatlined, and you've already delivered a hundred electroshocks and three epipens in order to wake it up, um, a larger dose of adrenaline is not going to help at this point. You know, so um, helicopter money. How many times does that work? Uh, and what happens when it doesn't? So uh, I'm I'm not very optimistic for that particular one.